But we're also going to be talk about that be talking about the sort of vacuum in government now with Richard Murphy, who's an economic justice campaigner, also professor of accounting practice at Sheffield University Management School, um, and joins us now. Richard. Good evening. Well, first of all, uh, Richard, what did what were your views until it was sort of, uh, as it were, half cancelled of the Liz and Charles Roadshow? <laughs> the Liz and Charles Roadshow. Well, has it been cancelled? Well, well, she's I, only I going to the services. I think it's been rebranded. I don't think it's <laughs> been cancelled. Um, rebranded. I'll be honest with you, the, she's still there. All the photo opportunities that she wants are there. And I think a lot of people are going to take, if I'm honest, quite a lot of offence at it. Because Charles no. is actually... Well, there are four nations inside the UK... Um, one is the focus of attention, very much so, most of the time, and that, of course, is England and London, and a lot of activity is going to be taking place in London as capital of England over the next week or so. But the reason for doing this tour is actually to make clear that he is the king of a union, a united kingdom, and he's therefore going to the nations within the union. And they all have their own traditions, their own laws, their own parliaments, their own first ministers, their own archbishops of various different churches, none of which in many cases overlap in any way with the tradition in England. And therefore, this should be seen as each nation's activity. And this trust has no role to be there if she is seen to be the dominant character inside the Westminster and, let's be candid, the only parliament England has. Has. And therefore, it seems a wholly inappropriate gay crash. I've been looking oh. at some of the reactions. You know, there's a lot of anger in Wales about the appointment of a new Prince of Wales. They said, isn't Ty- I, yes, you know, Michael Sheen was that, left yeah. there? I know, we've mentioned yes, talked about that. And, and I said, you know, isn't okay, this can the time I just, to break with that? But, but, well, I, but Richard, can I just put you on pause? Because I, just want to, I think what you've said is, is rather provocative, and I want to put it out to our audience. Is Richard Murphy right that Liz Truss is actually gate crashing a royal tour should she be staying in london and working hard on her energy package which is as far as we know unfunded that's my question to you oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three back to you richard Okay, well, if that was provocative, it wasn't perhaps meant to be, but because I feel that's true. Um, She has got problems to deal with. That energy package was very weak. It's not clear what's happening. Why weak? Do you know how much you're going to be paying for sure? Do you know how you're going to be paying it? Do you know what the government is going to be doing to compensate? If you're on very low income, do you know that you'll be out of fuel poverty? I don't think so. Do you know what will happen to your standing charge? I suspect you don't. And on and on. And this isn't the only aspect of the problem with regard to inflation. Of course, there is food price inflation. There's other inflation to deal with too. And the massive crisis we're going to have, which everybody seems to be ignoring at the moment except me, which is that the Bank of England is in fact going to be putting up mortgage rates in effect for everyone very rapidly. The average mortgage in the UK will go up by £600 a month if the Bank of England take interest rates to 4%, which is what is expected. Now, not immediately, because a lot of people are on fixed rate deals, but that will happen eventually. But wait, because that's a, lot of people that's are coming a two off. percentage point rise more from where we are now. It is, and that is exactly what is priced in by the financial markets to be the interest rate early in 2023. And remember, the financial markets have a very strong mechanism for doing future markets, which predict future interest rates, and that's what they're expecting. So if that happens, I promise you the energy crisis is going to look like, well, a little storm in a teacup compared with the crisis that is going to hit us when people can't pay their mortgages next year and we'll get a banking crisis and we'll but get wait, homelessness Richard, and so on. I've seen, I've seen data which suggests that people's energy bills will be bigger than their rent and mortgages. So, Some will so, be. so wait, what you're saying is Look, when in my case, the of Bank of England, by the way, has suspended its, <laughs> its interest rate decision out of respect. Um, but what you're saying is they could have a double whammy of a huge, well, of a moderated energy bill plus an enormous rent rent or um sorry interest rate mortgage rise 
There is nobody who doubts that the Bank of England still want to push up interest rates. The members of the Monetary Policy Committee are saying it. It's unambiguous. The Fed is likely to put up interest rates by another three quarters of a percent, putting pressure on the Bank of England to act. The European Central Bank is putting up interest rates now. All of these central bankers are working in the same way. None of them will solve inflation by doing this. They can only create an economic crisis. But groupthink is capturing them. We are in deep and desperate trouble here. Now, I didn't expect to come on and discuss that. I've discussed it earlier in the week with others on LBC. But this is the bigger crisis. And we need to be talking about that as well. What is the government going to be doing about this impending crisis and how are they going to stop it? Are they going to tell the Bank of England don't do this, for example, which is within their power? But the, the Liz Truss, as you say, won't be in Westminster this week. She'll be out okay. and about. And was, she, was and, she in Westminster? You think she should be, you know, in conversations with the Bank of England, which is nominally independent, uh, trying, very to, nominally. trying you, to keep you, a lid on interest <laughs> rates, because what's the point of subsidising uh, our energy bills now and making the taxpayer pay for it later if the bills on terms of the mortgages and so on and interest rates are going to come come and take away all the, as it were, the, the, the comfort that she has been able to Indeed. bring? Okay. So and what, that's a crisis to come. Oh and so I, I, what worries me, though, um, when let's go back to the first subject we were talking about. I actually decided that on my blog, which is fairly well read, I would actually try to persuade people not to discuss any political dimension to the succession. Um, and was really actually deleting comments, trying to be too provocative. The royal in either succession direction. or the political succession? The, well, the, the political succession has happened. I literally mean as a consequence of the Queen's death and okay. therefore the succession. But actually, by this morning, I thought, no, I can't hold that line anymore because Liz Truss has already politicised it. And let's also be honest, I think the royal family has too. A lot of things that are happening that are said to be traditional are actually basically new. They are specific to Charles. The rush is very much down to his choice. And some of the claims made during the course of this last few days, for example, in the proclamation declaration, the fact that we are now, he is now our liege lord and we are therefore his vassals, which means that basically we are his servants, we are in, living under his humble um, protection. No, we're not. That's nonsense. That goes back to feudal language. There is language about the church in Scotland, which must be offensive to many people about there only being say one true lord. Did he yes, say liege lord or was it that the person who tooted on the on the balcony of st james of ballas who said it that was in the proclamation of him as king that he is now our liege lord and that means that we are his vassals now that is just unacceptable okay. it makes us serve in okay. effect in the okay. language that we're talking but about David, we should have been up sorry richard can, can we can we stick on to as it were the urgent business of government that is not going to get done because it does appear that our pri new prime minister has decided to go on tour with King Charles and we've got an interest rate crisis that's coming on top hard mm -hmm. on the heels of an energy bill crisis and mm -hmm. there is no one home. Precisely. After a whole summer when no one has also been home, for reasons we all understand, but which nonetheless have left led us to have what seems like an interminable period without effective government in place. And that is just unacceptable. And the government didn't need to, to for example, suspend Parliament this week. That was a choice. No, I'm going to talk about that, but I'm going to, I tell you exactly. That was a choice. No, it, it, there's no way you could have lying in state 23 hours a day with millions of people expected in the Palace of Westminster on the parliamentary estate and have the common sitting. Then she could have lain in state in Westminster Abbey instead. Okay, well... There's a, a nice convenient building next door available for the purpose. Can you I could have even put St Margaret's Church okay. also available next door. Yeah, I accept that. Or she could have lain in state in, some, in one of the other nations yes. of the United yes. Kingdom. Um, except, of course, we know she wasn't going to. Richard, on conference, you may have heard my conversation with The Guardian's Gabby Hintzliff. I did. She thinks it's bad luck on the Lib Dems because it's the only time they ever get any attention or airtime. She thinks Labour and Tories are going to 
go ahead because unless uh, the Tories recall uh, Parliament during Labour's speech in order to spike Keir Starmer's guns on his big day. Do you think that the conference season is going to be a distraction and expensive or revenue raising distraction for the main parties? Should they be actually back in Westminster sitting through conference season or not? I have endured some party conferences and <laughs> I'm not have. a member of a party. Um, but I have attended party conferences. They're internally boring as far as I can work out. Um, They're a look, knees they up, aren't they? So, I mean, they are a knees maybe up. it's another look, distraction everything. that we don't need. Everything that is required to be done at a party conference could start on a Friday afternoon and finish on a Monday lunchtime. <laughs> and you could have Parliament sitting for the rest of the week, Tuesday to Thursday, <laughs> which is when the main business takes place. They do not need to close Parliament for the fortnight of the Labour and Conservative Party conferences this year. And they would be both of them irresponsible to let that happen. I mean, both of them. OK, just one last question. Am I right in thinking that if we want to have a trend growth rate continuing at 2.5%, we've got to have interest rates at 2% maximum? Uh, or less. OK, thank you. Richard Murphy, Economic Justice Campaigner, also Professor of Accounting Practice at Sheffield University Management School.